until now we have this cube in its so-called local coordinate space and also called a local space and it's time to move it to the world space and from the world space uh, move it to the so-called clip space using uh, projection matrix and i'm going to add this link from learnopengl.com to the video description and if you want to know more about all of these uh, viewport transformations in all of these spaces here is a nice picture so our model is now in its local space so which is this uh, first uh, rectangle or picture and what we are going to do is create a model matrix and move this lock uh, this uh, model from I mean this uh, 3d cube from its local space to the world space and for now we won't uh, use a view matrix so from directly from the world space using a projection matrix we are going to move it to the clip space and this last uh, transformation the viewport transform uh, is automatically applied so here you can r read about it These local coordinates are the coordinates of your object relative to its local origin they are the coordinates your object begins in and the next step is to transform the local coordinates to the world space, co world space coordinates which are coordinates in respect of, of a larger world okay just uh, read about this i'm going to the code so here in now in the vertex source i'm going to add one more uniform of type matrix 4 and this will be the projection projection and i'm also going to rename this rotation to model matrix because this will be i'm going to add here a comment a combined uh, translation and ro rotation uh, trans translation so now the model matrix will combine all the translation and all the rotation uh, matrices in one big matrix which will be the model matrix and i'm also going to now multiply the vector four attribute position by this model matrix and later uh, also the projection matrix so other than that we don't have to change anything in the fragment source and I just changed the buffer so now we have I deleted all the colors so now we have three uh, XYZ I mean for each vertex now we have three XYZ uh, positions and two UV coordinates the next vertex XYZ position and its UV coordinate so here in the vertex after pointer settings I just changed this to vertices that item size times five so because now each vertex has five values XYZ and UV and here is the vertex attribute pointer for the texture coordinates so two uh, float values the uh, stride is also vertices at item size times five and the offset is 12 byte or 12 bytes uh, nothing is changing here i'm going to just change the, the texture okay now we see nothing because uh, because we changed here from rotation to model matrix okay i'm going to change this texture to the to create that jpeg because i can better illustrate how uh, the perspective projection uh, looks like with, with this uh, jpeg image and now i'm going to rename this instead of model lo rotation location this will be the model location here also model location and uh, to the uniform matrix we are going to upload to the model location and now we should see again our cube okay so let's create those matrices here after this one i'm going to create uh, first the projection matrix so projection equals and we are going to use of course the peer model so peer that matrix 44 with the lowercase m that create pers perspective projection matrix so create underscore perspective perspective projection matrix okay and now this takes actually four arguments the first argument to this uh, create perspective projection matrix function is the field of view i'm going to set it to 45 the next is the aspect ratio of the window so which is the window's uh, width divided by the window's height so 1280 divided by 720 the next argument is the so-called near 
clipping plane, I'm going to add 0 0.1, and the far, the last argument is the far clipping plane, I'm going to set it to 100. And uh, here, if you scroll down, you will find the orthographic projection, and we are creating a perspective projection, and here are all the values. So the so the first argument he uses, of course, C++ and GLM, but the, the first argument is the um, uh, field of view, so which is it represents here in this image. So the field of view is this angle. And the next argument is, of course, the as I say, the aspect ratio, which is just the window's width divided by the window's height. So he does it here divided by the height and the near clipping plane and the far clipping plane so the near clipping plane and the far clipping plane so everything between these two planes will be visible and everything outside of these two planes the near and the far will will get gets discarded so it won't be visible I just recommend you to actually go here and uh, read about this because it is explained much much better than I can explain it okay now that we have a projection matrix we are also going to, I'm just going to duplicate this line, or copy this line, and rename it to Proj Matrix for Projection Matrix. And we are getting the uniform location called Projection. Projection. And now it's time to actually upload uh, to this Projection Matrix uniform uh, using also the, I'm just going to copy this one. And to the projection location and it will be the projection matrix so pro projection and it's absolutely enough to upload this matrix only once because it won't change so you don't have to upload this matrix inside the application loop so because it doesn't changes um, of course later when we are going to create a camera this will change so we will have to upload this again and again although it's not true because the all the only the view matrix will change when I'm, we are, I'm going to implement the camera so probably um the only thing when when this projection matrix should change when the video when, i mean the window gets resized so now let me take a look okay we need we need to actually multiply this model matrix by the projection so and you should read it from right to left so first uh, we have the, uh, the mesh or the model or i mean the 3d mesh in its local space then it get, gets gets multiplied by the model space which puts it into the word space i mean the model matrix which puts in, it into the word space and then uh, from the word space it gets uh, to the to the so-called clip space using the projection matrix and now let's take a look okay now we are inside the cube and that's why we needed this model space so that we can move outside uh, and i'm going to create one more matrix which will be the translation matrix translation and also using the peer that matrix 44 with a uh, lowercase m and create from translation create uh, create from translation and this takes a vector free so peer that vector free and not vector four vector free and as a list i'm going to add it zero on x zero on y and negative three on z so this will put or move the model away negative three units on the z axis and so we also need to multiply now this translation matrix with the rotation matrix so here i'm going to create a rotation matrix rotation equals and i'm just going to copy or cut this out so now we separate it out as in a separate variable and here i'm going to create a model matrix and the model will be the peer, I mean, peer dot matrix 44 that multiply and multiply the rotation, rotation by the translation, translation. And here in the GL uniform matrix, now I'm going to upload to the vertex shader the 
combined model matrix. So now this model holds uh, the combined matrices from the rotation and also from the translation. So now, as you can see, the um, cube is moved negative three unit uh, on the z axis. And let me see. So now, so now, first of all, as you can see now, now we have a perfect cube. Um, before that, if I if I just remove these these things here. Uh, oops. This is more of as it looks like as a rectangle, not as a cube. So it's just stretched. Um, and even if you do this, as you can see, it absolutely stretches the cube. It should be a cube, but it, it uh, with equal sizes. But it doesn't look like it has an equal side when when we stretch the window. Oops. Okay. Add that. Okay, add that back. And now, if you take a look, it has equal sides. So, width, height, and uh, depth of this cube looks equally. And also, when you resize the window, let me show you. When you resize the window, it gets stretched. So, if you resize the window, you should also, you should always just. Uh, do this step, so copy the projection matrix to the window resize function, add it here, and also upload it once again to the to the vertex shader. But now the aspect ratio should be the new width divided by the new height. So I'm just going to copy the width and copy the height here. And every time we are resizing the window, we are also generating a new projection matrix and also uploading it to the vertex shader. So now if I resize the window, the, the cube doesn't stretch or doesn't scale. On, on, as you can see, it always has this cube uh, form.